Hi, this is Rishabh Rajan for Ask Audio, and this is a quick look at the Roland TR-8S. This still uses the Roland Analog Circuit Behavior Modeling, but it also now includes samples. I guess that's what the S stands for. It comes with a huge collection of pre-existing kits, from the classic 808s to a whole bunch of new modern samples. Lots of outputs at the back, you get six dedicated outputs aside from the main left-right stereo out, and you also have audio via USB. So quite easy to integrate this with a DAW. You get 11 channels here, any channel can have a mono or stereo source. You can also load in your own samples via the SD card slot or USB. Let's check out some of the sounds here. So if I tap kit here, I'm now scrolling through the available kits. So as you can see, starting from the 808 and going all the way up to some modern sample based kits. You get 128 kits and 300 onboard samples. You can access patterns by tapping here. I can tap at the bottom here to select a specific pattern, or I can use the value dial to scroll through all the other patterns. Let's load in one. I'll hit the start stop button. I can change patterns on the fly. Now it's only going to change once it's finished playing through all the different variations. So you get eight different variations per pattern. Some patterns don't use all the 8 slots, but if you're creating your own pattern, you can potentially create an 8 bar long pattern. You can see in this pattern, only two variations are being used. These sliders here control the level of the individual channels. It cannot be customized to control anything else. It's not as smooth as a DJ crossfader control, but smooth enough to quickly adjust level like this. Now for each channel, you get three different controls here. Let's look at the snare drum channel here. The first one here is tune. Over here, you can see the parameter value as you're adjusting it. Oops, I touched the other channel there, my mistake. Next style here is DK control. And lastly, you get a freely assignable controller. Insert effect that you can turn on from here and get a one dial control. It's a high pass filter right now, but I can change it by holding shift and tapping the on button. And now with the value dial, I can swap out the effect. Let's try using the flanger. You can quickly add fills to your pattern by tapping over here with this manual trigger for the fill in. But there's also an auto fill option that you can turn on and you can set when you want the fill to trigger. There's a master tempo control over here. Keep in mind there's no time stretching feature. So if you load in your custom loops, the tempo might not match up. We can also add some shuffle to the overall group. Now let's take a quick look at creating your own patterns. I've loaded this existing drum kit slash pattern, but I'm gonna go ahead and erase what's here. So now I've cleared out all these variations. Now when I hit play, we hear nothing. All right, so to record a part, we can select a part from here, and then just add in the steps like a subsequencer. Let's make it a bit more interesting. Select the snare drum. I can also use this instrument record mode. So if I tap this number two button here, I can record in the pattern. Let's go to this close hi-hat part. 
We also have this button here, which is velocity sensitive. So we can use that to record in the part. Though you can also adjust velocity by holding shift and tapping a step. The different brightness will give you different velocity values. All right, let's bring in some more sounds. I'll switch to instrument play and audition some. There's a little snare here we can use. So there are 11 possible channels, which means the first 11 buttons at the bottom over here will trigger each of the individual channels. All right, I'm gonna to switch to a TR rec mode and I'm gonna lay in this snare part. Now there's a really cool ratcheting mode that we can enable. If I tap sub here, and tap a step, based on this subset value, I can create subdivided hits. It's a bit hard to see this here, but the subdivided hits will be lit yellow instead of red. Now let's make use of our variations. I can copy a variation into another slot, and now I have like a two bar pattern. You can tap and hold these two buttons to play both of them together. Let's go back to that first pattern and I'll remove the snare part. Now when we play these two variations together, we get a longer pattern. A lot of real-time control, which makes this machine great for live performance. I like the velocity sensitive button here. It helps to add some dynamics to the group. All right, another cool new feature that Roland have added to this tr test is the motion recording feature, which is essentially real-time automation. So let's say on this snare, I wanna adjust the tuning, but I wanna automate it. So I can just hit that record button twiddle the dial in real time and it gets recorded in. This kind of real time automation is fantastic for a live performance. And you can also do this offline if you wish. All right, so that's a quick look at the Roland TR-8S, a worthy successor to the TR-8, a great machine for live performance and also for in-studio work. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.